The concept of the Ubermensch, otherwise known as the Beyond Man, the Overman, or the Superman, was developed by the original edgelord philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche in his book Thus Spoke Zarathustra. In the course of the book, Nietzsche has the character of Zarathustra posit the Ubermensch as a goal for humanity to set itself, an ideal to strive towards. Nietzsche created this concept as a way of distancing moral philosophy from traditional religious, mainly Christian, values. Rather than reflecting the otherworldliness of a set of moral values as put forth by an unknowable deity, the Ubermensch is intended to be a more grounded and earthly figure. Rather than promising eternal happiness in some mystical afterlife, the Ubermensch strives to find completeness and perfection in the here and now, while we are alive, not after death. In a way, the Ubermensch is actually comparable to the concept of Buddha, not some all-powerful deity, but a being being which individuals can strive to become. The idea of attaining enlightenment and becoming greater than your current self, a more rounded and fuller version of you, is the meaning behind the whole God is dead, he remains dead and we have killed him thing. In Nietzsche's time, as fewer and fewer people embraced traditional religion as the guiding star of their morality, his rationale was that something else must arise to take its place. If you want a more in-depth analysis, go type Ubermensch into that little search bar above me, or better yet, go to Google. There's a lot more people out there better informed than I who know a lot more about this stuff than me, so go ahead and check them out. Nietzsche's philosophies and concepts have influenced many people from all over the political and philosophical spectrum, from noteworthy anarchist writers like Emma Goldman to the entire Nazi party. It's also had its fair share of criticisms. An Ubermensch is conceived to be a superior entity, but what are the implications behind this entity's existence? What happens if this Ubermensch doesn't work in the interests of others? What happens if they, for instance, abuse their power, or take advantage of others' weaknesses, or simply seek out their own personal crusades instead of helping move the world forward to a greater moral state? Or how about this, what happens if the world moves beyond the need for a certain kind of Ubermensch? What happens when one Ubermensch falls and another arises to take their place? And yeah, I bet a lot of you guys are wondering why a video about Falcon and the Winter Soldier is talking about 19th century German philosophers, but trust me, there is a point. For now... Falcon and the Winter Soldier is the second of Marvel's new line of TV shows coming off the heels of the critical success of WandaVision. Of the two, this feels more in line with a typical Marvel property. The action, the tech, the flying around, the super soldiers, it's all familiar territory for us. In a sense, Falcon and the Winter Soldier feels more like a sequel to Civil War, despite that it takes place after Endgame and even features heavy plot points relevant to Thanos wiping out half of human life. In terms of the themes, to the characters, to the whole political action thriller vibe, it feels more like a fourth addition to the Captain America franchise than the MCU in general. Hell, they even use some of the same musical scores from Civil War. <laughs> This is absolutely the next chapter in the Captain America legacy. Those first three films and Endgame represented Steve's journey as Captain America and now we're seeing Sam Wilson take up that journey instead. The premise ultimately revolves around Sam, otherwise known as the Falcon, grappling with the idea of becoming the next Captain America after Steve Rogers handed him his fabled shield. At the same time, Bucky Barnes is in the stage of recovering from his past as the Winter Soldier, bad guys show up, hijinks ensue, etc etc. If you want a quick review, here you go. I found Falcon and the Winter Soldier to be a very entertaining, if slightly underwhelming, addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. While the show has some brilliant action and characterization, I did feel the pacing was lacking in some episodes and I just wasn't very engaged with the plot. Unlike WandaVision, which benefited from a week-by-week -week format, Falcon and Winter Soldier is better off as a single binge. Not enough happens in each episode, either in terms of setup or 
plot development to hold your interest, and it's only when it gets to the middle when stuff gets really interesting, particularly with Zemo, the Wakandans, John Walker, and all the rest of it. If you treat it as an extended film instead of a TV show, I doubt the pacing would feel as haphazard. The Flag Smashers weren't very good villains, a lot of the plot setups, like with the Power Broker and everything, they weren't that interesting and kind of predictable, and if I'm honest, I saw most of the finale coming a mile away. All the same, the show is still worth watching for the character development, the themes, and the entertaining action. Thought WandaVision was better personally, but it's still a load of fun. More than that though, the show does tackle a lot of interesting themes which were set up in the previous Captain America films, and even expands on them for a newer generation. That's really what Sam Wilson represents, a new Captain America for a new generation. Someone strong and powerful, a paragon of virtue and independent morals who people can look up to and aspire to be. Sound familiar? Characters like Captain America and his DC equivalent Superman can be most easily described as the American Ubermenches. Ubermensch, I? D I don't know. For proof of this, look no further than the story of how Superman was originally formed in 1938 in Jerry Seigel's The Reign of the Superman, which was directly inspired by Nietzsche's work. Captain America came next with several elements inspired by Superman, one thing led to another, and Marvel and DC's respective Overmen have become household names. Frankly, the pair of them are more alike than a lot of comic book fans would care to admit. They're both white, male, heteronormative, and endowed with incredible physical strength and embody truth, justice, and the American way. I will say one interesting detail which sets Captain America apart from Superman is the nature of his creation. Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, his original writers, both of whom were Jewish I might add, created the character before America ever even got involved in World War II. So Captain America didn't just serve as mindless propaganda, but a way to wake American people up to the fact that the Nazis were killing Jewish people like Simon and Kirby by the millions. The fact that two Jewish writers created an ultra-Aryan hero who chooses to fight against Hitler's ideology, an ideology which for all intents and purposes would allow someone like Steve Rogers to effectively rule the world, is kind of inspiring if you think about it. And it speaks to what makes Captain America the ultimate allied hero. His selflessness and compassion are his greatest strengths. He fights for the innocent against injustice because it is simply the right thing to do, regardless of what would objectively benefit him personally. To an extent, Captain America both subverts and reinforces the Ubermensch idea. Steve Rogers is powerful, strong-willed, and determined to achieve his goals, all things that would prompt Nietzsche to start drooling over his typewriter. On the other hand, Steve's rather simplistic black and white morality totally flies in the face of Nietzsche's philosophy, which is meant to be anything other than black and white, like the Christian values that came before them. Nietzsche worried that as Christianity lost more and more followers, the lack of a moral centre would lead people into the empty vacuum of nihilism, whereby nothing has meaning and morality simply doesn't exist. This was ultimately why Nietzsche saw the need for an Ubermensch. Without new values to live by, nihilism would end up destroying us. These new values must not be motivated by fear or ignorance or awe for some otherworldly force. They must be motivated by a love of life and the world around us. The Ubermensch must be life-affirming, something Captain America represents to his very core. Where it gets a little thorny is in defining our American Ubermensch's morality. Nietzsche wanted to create a new set of values to replace the old, but what exactly are the values of Captain America? Well, the clue is in the name. America. His main goal is to preserve the American way, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. His morality is less defined by his own individual choices, but more how he sees the value of his country. Nietzsche's Ubermensch embodies his or her own personal morality. Captain America, on the other hand, embodies the morality of America specifically. It's less individualistic as it is nationalistic, and this is where things get a little thorny. What exactly is 
is this system of American morality? That depends on who you ask, and some answers are infinitely more terrifying than others. And this cuts to the main problem of Captain America being an ubermensch, his morality is in a constant state of flux. Going back to the comics, Captain America went through various iterations depending on the writers and the social climate of America at the time. While in World War II, he was the classic Nazi punching hero, in the 1950s he took on the title of Captain America the commie smasher in lieu of the Red Scare, the Cold War, anxieties about Russia, and antipathy towards any who showed even the vaguest sign of sympathising with communist ideas. As a result, Captain America of this time barely resembles the Captain America of today. You can't really see this guy working to defend the defenceless no matter who they are if they happen to align themselves with, say, un-American ideals, can you? This shifting definition of Captain America's value system is a reason why he makes for quite a shaky ubermensch, because ultimately his values come with the weight of an entire country on top of them. America's government, its people, its history, all of these things affect the morality that Captain America would seek to impose, and this feeds into the central question belying the heart of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. What does it really mean to be Captain America? Sam Wilson spends a great deal of the show contemplating and considering what it would mean for him to take up Steve Rogers' shield, with all the implications contained therein. And with that in mind, it is kind of nice seeing Marvel take such a mature step forward. I mean, this show directly takes aim at some of the darkest stains on America's history and how they affect the modern day. Slavery, segregation, immigration, exploitation of soldiers, callous government policy, all of these are huge topics for a company like Marvel. Marvel to tackle, and I'm pleased to say that they do a relatively good job of handling them. I mean, it does basically end with the usual good guy makes a nice speech which magically changes the government's mind trope, which bugs the hell out of me. But aside from that, Sam is coming into the mantle of Captain America from a very different perspective as Steve's, and this is very much symbolic of the differing problems facing each generation of America. During Steve's time, the threat of the day was far easier to pinpoint. The Nazis, Hitler, the Red Skull, there was a single, easily defined enemy to defeat. Nowadays though, things are a little more complicated. A lot of the threats facing the soul of America are internal rather than external. Internal. Systemic oppression of minorities, for one. A callous and indifferent government, for another. These are problems with America specifically. Problems Sam is having to tackle now that Steve is out of the picture. He's having to wade through a muddier world than Steve's. One where the sins of his own country are coming more to light. It's the reason why he feels a kinship with Carly Morgenthau and the Flag Smashers. Really, until they start killing folks, their crusade is completely justifiable. Helping the helpless, stealing urgently needed supplies that government agencies are hoarding, acting in ways that help communities both small and large. What exactly is the difference between these actions and the actions of Steve Rogers era Captain America? Oh yeah, cause Carly randomly decides killing people is the way to go. Which on a side note, I am really sick to death of seeing characters with anarchist philosophies like the Flag Smashers being demonised in popular media. I mean they're either complete chaos loving monsters monsters like the Dark Knight's Joker or Mission Impossible Solomon Lane, or sympathetic but ultimately irredeemable villains like Zahir in Legend of Korra, or Anarchy from Batman, or even V from the original graphic novel version of V for Vendetta. No matter how much the anarchist is humanised, they always end up committing some atrocity that no actual real world anarchist would condone just to cement them as the villain. Like, ooh, I dunno, bombing an entire building full of innocent people for absolutely no reason when everything that you've done up to this point has been peaceful and completely justified. It's almost as if our popular media is made to serve the interests of capitalism and make a profit so any ideology which directly contradicts that and calls out the larger system oppressing and neglecting millions of people must be demonised in some way for fear of people seeing said system for what it is. Hmm. But anyway, politics aside, these are just some of the issues that Sam is having to tackle throughout the show. In a way, he kind of learns from his enemies, all of whom have some element of validity to their opinion. 
Hell, even Zemo, who, yes, is the best part of the show hands down. Marvel managed to take one of the most complained about and underwhelming villains in their roster and transform him into a genuinely likeable and fun anti-hero, so good job there. But on top of that, Zemo's ideology is expanded on from Civil War. It goes from simply being about revenge to an outright disdain for any group or individual who he describes as a supremacist. He destroys the remaining vials of super serum because he asserts that anyone who takes Makes it is susceptible to corruption, and in a lot of ways he's not wrong. Anytime someone takes that serum, you are entrusting that person with an insane level of power over their fellow human beings, power which would be the easiest thing in the world to abuse, and that's something that we see demonstrated in the show in John Walker. You're essentially flipping a coin between getting another Steve Rogers or another Red Skull every time the serum gets used. The serum amplifies everything that is inside, so good becomes great, bad becomes worse. The super serum represents the means to become an ubermensch, the means to become a superior version of yourself. In that, Zemo's argument that the world would simply be better off without super soldiers is an argument against the existence of an ubermensch. To quote Douglas Adams, it is a well-known fact that people who want to rule people are ipso facto those least suited to do it. Anyone who is capable of getting themselves made president should on no account be allowed to do do the job. It's not a case of power corrupting, but power amplifying all the good or bad that's already there. So Zemo's argument is that we're all just better off not taking the chance and cutting out the idea of super soldiers altogether. But Zemo's argument is an example of a common misconception of Nietzsche's ideas, that the Ubermitch represents someone who dominates others. The Nazis are perhaps the most infamous example of Nietzsche's philosophies going wrong, using a warped version of his Ubermitch Mitchian ideas to justify, you know, all the ethnic cleansing and stuff. This represents the danger of misunderstanding Nietzsche's philosophy. Ultimately, the idea of setting yourself above everyone else is incredibly seductive, and what better way of achieving that than a magic super soldier serum? This is where John Walker, aka the US agent, comes into the picture. In a way, John Walker embodies this misinterpretation of Nietzsche's ubermensch. He possesses all the determination and will of the previous Captain America, and after taking the serum, gains all of the same physical strength strength too. But instead of fighting for the sake of some greater morality, at his core, John is only fighting for himself, for his status, for his desire to be Captain America, for his need to prove himself in the eyes of his country and the rest of the world. These personal wants and insecurities override any sense of duty that he may have to the people of his country. Rather than representing a true Ubermensch, John Walker represents the misinterpretation of the Ubermensch, the desire to become superior to the rest of humanity, a concept which totally flies in the face of everything Steve Rogers stood for and actively fought against. The last time I was in Germany and saw a man standing above everybody else, we ended up disagreeing. Nietzsche also believed that, on top of striving towards one's goals, a true Ubermensch needs to possess a level of humility to accept their inevitable failings with grace, something Steve and Sam did, which John did not. John is the opposite of humble. He is insecure, brash, overcompensating, and basically everything Steve and Sam are not. He would rather blow a negotiation between Sam and Carly that's going well simply to satisfy his own ego and impatience rather than let it play out. Instead of taking defeat on the chin, he takes the same super soldier serum as the people that he is tasked to apprehend despite the obvious dangers. Instead of accepting that he is no longer Captain America, he builds himself a shield replacement out of tin and then goes back out there on his mad crusade. This ultimately cuts to the point behind Captain America as an icon. The true Captain America does not fight to empower himself, but to empower others. That is the core of his morality morality, selflessness, and sacrifice. It's not about the serum, it's about the person taking it, and this is what sets Sam Wilson apart from the Flag Smashers, from John Walker, and even from Steve Rogers. He does not take the Super Soldier Serum because, really, he doesn't need it. 
Sam is every bit Captain America as Steve was and held as many qualities of the Ubermensch as Steve did, but while Steve embodied the heroism of his day, Sam Wilson embodies the hero of the 21st century. So in a way, that makes him kind of a progressive American Ubermensch? Like Steve, Sam is carrying the legacy of his country on his shoulders, but as a black man, the country that he is fighting for hasn't exactly treated him or his ancestors with anything even resembling the same dignity it gave Steve's. Steve never had to deal with the untellable effects of racism, Sam on the other hand has. As Isaiah points out in one of the episodes, why would any self-respecting black man take up the ultimate symbol of a country as historically bigoted and racist as America. This is just one of many things Sam is grappling with in the course of this show. He is trying to do right by Steve, by the Avengers, by America, by the world, by himself, by his family, and by basically everyone. Is there anything more Captain America than that? Sam's journey is both internally and externally about becoming America's Ubermensch, becoming that shining example of American morality, or at least what American morality should be. Isaiah's disillusionment with America is totally justified after we learn everything that he suffered through at the hands of the US government, and his struggle is emblematic of the struggles fought by African Americans all throughout history into present day. As inspiring as he was, Steve Rogers represented a very narrow and very idolised image of America, the kind of World War II era image that America wants to project for itself even today. But this image, for lack of a better term, whitewashes a lot of America's past atrocities. It glorifies America without acknowledging its history, and this is why the shield absolutely must pass to Sam Wilson instead of Bucky, instead of John Walker, instead of anybody else. Bucky is too damaged to serve as the ultimate inspiring hero, a fact that he is all too aware of, and John is much too eager to truly appreciate what being a hero really involves. Only Sam is able to carry the weight of the shield and everything it represents. He he has the drive, the will, the strength of character, and most importantly, the compassion, the ability to empathize and feel another person's pain. It's the reason he insists on not fighting back against Carly at the end. Unlike Walker, his first instinct isn't to just kill or arrest Carly and the other Flag Smashers, but to reason with them, talk with them, understand what they're going through and what they're trying to accomplish. And in the end, the Flag Smashers do kind of succeed in their goals, thanks to Sam. This is the very definition of a life-affirming morality, compassion over ignorance, words over violence. Does America truly embody these qualities? No. All signs very definitely point to no, but this is also a fact that Sam is more than aware of. Unlike the idealistic Steve, Sam knows all about the ugly side of America. He knows the crimes committed in the name of his country because they were inflicted on him and his people for centuries and continue to be done to this day. But the idea behind the Ubermensch is not to embody the morality of the here and now, but to strive towards something better, a better world, a better America. What sets Captain America apart as an icon and a symbol from the concept of the Ubermensch is that the Ubermensch imposes their own morality onto the world around them. Neither Steve nor Sam really do this. They do not force their values or their morals onto others because such an action would contravene said values. Sam doesn't go around the world spreading the American way whether other countries like it or not, we've already seen where that road leads. All he aims to do is protect people who need protecting, talk to people who could do with a talk to, and ultimately try to save and improve as many lives as he can. While this is pretty dang far from America's real life actions, both domestic and overseas, Sam still embodies the values America should strive for, in a way that John Walker, Bucky, and even Steve could not. Sam should not be like America as it is today. America should be more like Sam.